Um, last week we started this, and uh, I just kept going and going and going, and uh, I figured I'm going to have to wait until next week to finish. So uh, this is last week, and uh, we went through our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, and we looked at all the different names for Jesus and for the Father, and there's all kinds of them there. The whole point of this is when uh, Jesus gave this, he was asked, how, teach us how to pray. So he gave them this. And so some people take that as, um, well, let's pray this as fast as we can, and then our job's done. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. I think you can say that all I probably could. <laughs> but I'm an asthmatic, and I only have so much air. And so, that's the way some people look at prayer. And I don't think that's how Jesus meant it. He meant it as an outline. Kind of how I put it out here that there's different sections of the prayer. And the same prayer is in Luke, except it's worded a little bit different, and it's a little bit shorter. Um, so it's really kind of an outline. Well, if you want to learn how to pray, Jesus tells them, you first start praising the Lord. You praise His name. Hallowed, hallowed is His name. And then you go to Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You want his kingdom to come into different people's lives, into different situations. And uh, so when you pray that, you begin to pray for things in your life that don't add up with God's kingdom. Pray for your family. Um, pray for your spouse. Pray for family members. Uh, pray for your church, the different members of the church. Pray for your nation. Pray for your world. Your praying for, this is what would be called interceding, intercessional prayer. You're praying for different people. Give us this day our daily bread. This is where you're going to God and you're going, these are my needs. These are the things that I need in my life, whether it's food for the day, whether it's money to pay the, the car payment, whether it's money to uh, pay the rent, whether it's money to fix something. Lord, I need your help. I need your help. Here's, here's the places I need your help. And then, this is where we got to last week, and uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And uh, after that, after last week, I decided, you know what, we need to learn more about forgiving. So, um, that's what this week is about. Just like uh, Julia and Abby's um, little play there, um, if you look in Matthew, let's go ahead and just look in Matthew. Open up your Bible. Matthew chapter 6. And this verse is verse 12. It says, Forgive us our debts, as we also forgive or as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Verse 14. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. The same way that little play just acted out in front of us, Jesus says, this is how my Father will treat you if you refuse to forgive. In that story, Julia said uh, um, the one person owed 10,000 denarii um, or 10,000 talents. And you add that up. Does any, can anybody tell me what a talent is? I'm going to tell everybody your weight. You're not supposed to do this. Come here. This right here is a talent. How much you weigh, baby? 78. 78 pounds. A talent is 75 pounds. Did you know that? You thought of it as a coin. 
probably. Because we watch Jesus movies and they show the guy with one coin and he goes and buries it. This is a talent. Seventy-five pounds is a talent. So, imagine 10,000 of these. Whether it's, whether it's silver or whether it's gold, it's a whole lot of money. It's a whole lot of money. Ten thousand, um, silver right now is around 30 bucks. Are you trying to stick your hand in my pocket? No. Okay, you keep moving your hand. Um, silver is $30. So if you have 10,000 talents of that, it's about $4 million. Gold, it doesn't tell us. It just says it's talent. It doesn't say whether it's silver or gold. If it's gold, today, gold is about $1,500 an ounce. So what was that, Julia? Was it 250 or was it 450 $450 million. Okay. The one person was forgiven that big a debt. And then went out and began to choke their friend for 10 denarii, which is about the price of a soda. So just imagine, I just got forgiven for either $4 million or $450 million. Forgiven. They were going to throw me in jail. They were going to throw my family members in jail. They were going to throw my children in jail. And I beg, please, please forgive me. And he forgives me for that. And then somebody owes me a buck fifty, owes me a Mountain Dew, and I choke him and send him to jail. Did I really get the idea of forgiveness? No, I didn't. I was forgiven, but then I refused to forgive somebody else. That's what our point is here. What was your quote this week you took from uh, um, Corey Tim Boom? That was, me, that was you? Okay. It was uh, to forgive and set a prisoner to be free and find out the prisoner was you. Say that again. To forgive is to set a prisoner free. And then you find out that that prisoner is you. When you will not forgive someone... Okay, go ahead and have a seat back. If I have a problem with Taylor, and I spend all my time going... I remember when Taylor did this. And she did that. And she did this and that. All these different things. And I focused my mind on, she needs to get punished for this. She's terrible. Look at all these things that she did. Did I hurt Taylor a bit? No. You know, because you're sitting here listening to me. But if you weren't, you didn't know all that what goes on in your head. That's going on in your head. You're going, uh, that person, I hate it. And then next time I see a girl with glasses like Taylor's and blonde hair, and I see her, I go, I don't like her. And the reason is because she just looks like Taylor. And Taylor made me mad, so now anybody who looks like her, I'm mad at. Does anybody know how that is? Or am I the only jerk around who ever treated people like that. <coughs> okay. <laughs> We're in the same boat here. I, w- I want somebody to find Proverbs 24, 17. So if you really want to hurt somebody, I want you to read this. I want you to read this proverb. Yep. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Say it again, and maybe read a little farther. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Let the Lord see it, and it displeases him, and he turn away, and he turn away his wrath from him. Did you get that, Jonathan? Come up here. We're going to figure this out. 
Okay, read it slowly to me. Here is me, who's mad at this person for something he's done. Okay, start. He just fell down and busted his head open. <laughs> I remember when he did this and this and this and this and this to me. He deserves it. Read on. What I just did. Let the Lord see what I just felt and what I just thought about him, and it will displease the Lord, and and he turned his, away his wrath from him. If you have an enemy, exactly, you have an enemy, and that enemy really did do something awful and terrible and hideous to you, but you have been hurt, and you feel bitter and angry, and that lost person who <laughs> has done something terrible to you and who's going to get punished eventually, God says, I love my child and I want to work on his heart. So his heart is turning bitter, so I'm not going to punish him because it made that sickness in my child's heart just a little more sicker. Do you get that? Does that make sense? Does anybody get that? So if you really want to hurt them, forgive them. Help them up. There you go. That's what Jesus tells us to do. If, you're, if your enemy has hurt you, you need to forgive them and you need to pray for them. And you need to pray that God would bless them. You can have a seat now. You do. Okay. <laughs> so here it is. Here's my little outline, and I may go through some of it, all of it, because half of it I just talked through. Um, here's some signs. You, everybody knows what a red octagon is, right? No? It means stop. So these are signs, these are signs, if you can see them in yourself, you have unforgiveness. If you get angry or upset at the sight of someone. So let's go back to me and Taylor. I'm mad at Taylor. And every time I see her, there's this little, there's this little thing that goes, I want to stab an ice pick in her. So, if you get angry or upset at the sight of someone, I haven't had a discussion with her, she didn't say something mean to me, she just looked at me, and I looked at her, and I go, ah. If you have that, you have unforgiveness. Whether that's a friend, whether that's a parent, whether that's a parent looking at a child, whether that's you at your next door neighbor. You have unforgiveness. Desire to stay away from some people. No, I'm just, I'm raising my hand showing I've done that. You know what? I've started praying and praying a lot more. And I know where my problems are. Sometimes I don't like to deal with them. And I had three people on my list when it came to forgiveness three months ago when I started this. There's still one person on that list. <laughs> and I'm still wanting to stay away from them. Um, that shows me I have unforgiveness. So I'm working on that. I got two people off my list. It used to be about five or six of them. <laughs> Hostility towards people who say the same kind of phrases, the same kind of things. They look similar to someone. Or if they do something slight to you, if somebody does something really small to you and you just go ballistic, it's probably because people have done that to you and 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 you've gotten the way I perceive it. And Steve Schmidt was the one who showed it to me do it to Julia. I'm picking on everybody else. Might as well pick on you. 
Let's just imagine. Do you have a bruise anywhere? Um, I don't know. I got a band-aid. Anybody got a bruise? I got a band-aid. You got a band-aid. That's why you hurt your finger last night. Yeah, I slammed the door. Okay, she slammed the door on her finger. This is what's called a bruise or an injured place. Um, what happens is... I know God made me do it for a reason. I didn't harm her. I didn't injure her. But if I come up and I just barely squeeze on her finger, it's going to affect what's happened to her in the past. So, let's just imagine this. Someone has been really mean to you, and when they came up to you, they'd always go like this. They'd go... They'd do an eye roll every time they saw you because they were just disgusted by you because they couldn't stand you. Then the next time... Somebody else, look at her. Then there's this hatred that boils up inside of you. And why? Because you have a bruise. You've been hurt there, and you've been hurt, and you've been hurt, and you've been hurt. And that's the bruise. So, those are our signs. Those are our road signs to show us if we have unforgiveness. Who do we forgive? There's people that we can forgive, which we'll get to more in a minute. Did you know you can forgive God? Did you know you can be mad at God? And you have to forgive Him? And you may think, but God's supposed to be perfect. But I'm not. I have things that I want God to do. God, I want you to do this, and I want you to do this, and I want you to do this. And if he doesn't do those things, I may get upset with him. Did he do anything wrong? He's perfect. He didn't do anything wrong. I'm the one doing something wrong. So I have to forgive God, and then the other half is I have to forgive myself. I've got something going on in me. That's what I've told my children before because sometimes I get a little angry and punish them for something. And uh, maybe I punish them too hard. Um, I point out the fact that, you know what? If Jesus was my son, you know, Jesus came and lived as Mary and Joseph's son. If Jesus was my son, I'd find something wrong that he did. It's not always something that you do. Sometimes it's just something within me. And uh, so, if perfection was living under me, under my roof, I would still probably find something wrong to be angry about. So, uh, you know what? Sometimes we have to forgive others. Sometimes we have to forgive God. And sometimes we have to forgive ourselves. Forgive ourselves for falling short and doing the wrong thing. Keep falling, keep falling. Um, forgiveness is not a feeling. Is an act of the will. The same way you don't um, always want to wake up and go, yes, all I'm going to eat today is yogurt and salad and something else. <laughs> you don't want to wake up and do that, but it's a decision of your will that I don't want to live at the weight I'm living at anymore, and you make a decision... You may not wake up and go, I want to go and ride the bike and work off whatever. But it's a decision that you decided, I'm going to do this. And whether it hurts, whether it feels good, whether it hurts, whether whatever, I'm going to do it. So forgiveness is the same way. This unforgiveness, you've, you've put yourself as a prisoner and you want to get rid of it. And you have to make a decision. Um... In this forgiveness, we give up rights. We give up our right to dwell on an offense, to think about it, to think about it and think about it, to hold that offense and go, this person did this to me and they deserve to be punished. You give up the right to keep bringing it up. This is something that happens all the time. And I mentioned this last week. Um, say, Jonathan. No, I'm going to pick on somebody else. 
Amanda did something to me. And so she did it. And so I go to Sean and I say, you know what she did to me? She did this. And that's awful. Look at the scar that she's left me. She did this terrible thing. And then I go, hmm, Julia. You see her? Do you know her? You may not know her, but let me tell you about her. Her name is Amanda. And this is what she did to me. Do you know Amanda? Oh, okay. Well, it's a, it doesn't matter whether you know her or not. This is what she did to me. When we forgive someone, we give up the right to keep sharing all the terrible things that were done to us. We're giving up that right. <laughs> we give up the right to hear. When you've forgiven someone, you've given up the right to hear, I'm sorry. You've decided, I've forgiven that person. It doesn't matter whether they ever say, I'm sorry or not. You give up the right to be bitter. Um, in Hebrews 12, I think it is, it says that a bitter root defiles many. It's like the root of a tree. It goes deep, deep, deep inside of you. And then it defiles many because then you act out of that and you harm other people. The little saying, hurt people, hurt people. If you've been hurt, you will probably hurt someone else. And that's that bitter root, hurting, defiling other people. You give up the right to be bitter. When you forgive, you give up the right of getting even. What, what Jesus says is, um, he says that uh, um, leave room for God's wrath. Allow him to get even. Um, so, that's enough about all the forgiveness. About, because we all know who we're mad at, who we haven't forgiven, and we don't have to take a list and have, I don't have to have all of you right on the whiteboard. This is the person that I haven't forgiven. Um, you know it in your head. You've seen the signs in your life. You know whether you've got them or not. These are the steps to forgiveness. These are the steps that you need to do. Okay. I'm speaking as a Christian. Okay? Okay? Okay, what? Okay, I'm speaking as a Christian. Because if you have come to know Jesus... You know all the things that you've done in your life and all the things that he's forgiven you for. There's a whole list that we don't want people to know about of all the things that we've done. And uh, when we know that we've been forgiven for that giant list of things and Quentin does something small to me and I forgive him, Quentin has pinched me, and it really hurt. For me to look at that, I go, look at all the mound of huge sins that I've done, and he just pinched me. It's not that big a deal. <clears throat> and here's the part that I didn't know a long time ago, but as I started forgiving people. Um... You have to face the offense. Um, offense is when someone has done something wrong to you. Um, somebody gives me something. It doesn't have to be real. No, no. Uh, but something is, somebody has done to you. Why don't you have a seat, ma'am? She what? She hits you with what? A baseball bat. Okay. Here it is. Here's what some people do. They go, oh, she's hitting me with the baseball bat. I'm a Christian. i got to forgive her. It's all over. And the next time you see Louisville Slugger, you go, oh, she did this to me, and it still hurts. I had to go to the hospital forever long. 
The first part of facing the offense is realize it's real. She really did hit me with the baseball bat. It really did hit. I really was in the hospital for three weeks after she hit me. And I really am dealing with the hospital bill for the next six years after this. Don't minimize it. You don't go, oh, well, it was just a little bat. It wasn't one of those aluminum bats. It was just a wooden bat, and it wasn't that big a deal. You don't give her excuses. Well, she was having a hard day, so that's why she whopped me upside the head. Um, you don't go, as you're lying in the hospital bed, and your friend comes in, and you go, oh, sure, I forgive you, and go on and live your life. You have to face the truth that it hurt, and they might have really meant to do it. <laughs> they might have really meant to hurt you. And it really did hurt, and you deal with the pain from it, and have been dealing with the pain from it for a long time. That is facing the offense. It's real. It was real. Um, part of it, the next part of it, that's facing it. Now you have to feel it. And if you hit with a baseball bat, you probably can't deny it, which is one of them. One of the things that people do, they deny it. You imagine another sin or another pain to you. Maybe you deny it. You go, maybe that, that didn't happen. That wasn't, that didn't happen in my life. Um, you ignore it. You just kind of, I know they did this, but I'm just not going to think about it. I'm not going to pay any attention to it. I'm just going to ignore it. It didn't happen. Um, another part of that is that thing happened to me, and I just stuffed it down inside, and I paid no attention to it. You know what happens when you do that? It comes out. It comes out on other people. This is that root of bitterness defiling many. You have to realize it. You have to pay attention to it. This person did this to me, and it hurt and I'm dealing with the pain forever, uh, I can't ignore it. I can't stuff it down and act like it's not there. Allow that pain, allow yourself to feel that pain. This really hurts. <laughs> that is the part of the forgiveness process. The next part is that just that forgiving. Um, and it doesn't happen like that. I told you I had three months ago I had three people on my list. I still got one person. I didn't just go, I forgive them. It's been a process. And I keep going over it and and looking at it. And this is what this is what you do. This is what um this is one of those Christian answers We go, I'm asking you to, to, to do something in your mind, but I'm giving you a physical way of thinking about it. If you take who that person is, and you put their name on here, and you write what they've done, this is what you do. If I had a nail, I'd nail it there. There it is. How does that start out? Start out with forgive as you've been forgiven. <clears throat> when Jesus was on the cross, after the people had just beat him and ripped out part of his beard, whacked him in the head with the stick when he had a crown of thorns on, and they nail him there, and they're down at the foot of the cross, um, gambling over his robe. What does he say from up there? Yeah. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That's what we have to get in our head. They were 
murdering him, and he was up there dying. And he goes, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't know what they've done. And for me, when I forgave somebody a while back for a mound of hurt, that's what helped me to do it. It was like, now I'll pick on Sean. Um, let's just imagine, um, I'm going to slap you. And uh, so I'm mad at you, you've done something, and I slap you. And uh, unbeknownst to me, when I slap you, I'm going to dislodge a tooth, and you're going to have all kinds of jaw problems for the rest of your life. And there you go. So when I got up here... And if you could freeze that before the person does it, what was in my head? Was in my head going, I want to give him a problem that's going to last the rest of his life. I, do I want to make his teeth come out? No, he made me mad, and I'm lashing out. So that's what helped me to see, okay, this person had done this to me. They had hurt me. They didn't do it once. They did it again and again and again and again. And we tried to talk things out. And they just threw it all back in my face. And we tried to work it out. And it just didn't work. And I looked at that. I thought, here's that initial thing that caused all the pain. Did that person mean to do it? Did they know what they were doing? Just like Jesus on the cross. Did they mean what they were doing? Maybe he really meant to really, like right there, maybe I really would have meant to do that to Sean. But within me, yeah, I wanted to hurt him. Did those people really mean to murder Jesus? Yes, they did. You can give excuses. They were doing their job, blah, 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 blah. But did they really mean to do it? Yes, they really meant to do it. But stopping in that second, realizing that there's lots of baggage behind what is going on. That person who hurt me had just been hurt. And they were dealing with their own problems and lashed out at me. So within that, kind of like stopping the videotape right before the hit happened and me looking into their life and into their mind. Here's my Star Trek message of the day. Doing the mind now, bless them, and knowing what was really in their head, what they were really thinking, helped me to go, that wasn't about me. That was about all that person's hurts in their life. Hardly any of that was about me. Yes, it hurt me. And yes, me... Listen, that grudge hurt me. But most of that is within me. I allowed it to happen. So, to forgive, it takes time, and it takes just deciding to do it. Um, crucify it and leave it there. I don't, I don't hop back up. I've given up this right. When I forgive, I give up the right to take it and go, that's what they did. And I forgive them the right to continue to look at it and be angry and bitter. I have crucified it with Christ. It's up there with Him. It's been forgiven. So, Once you've decided to forgive somebody, it's like a horror movie. We don't watch horror movies, but the kids probably know enough about them that the bad guy is usually never dead. A few minutes later, he pops back up. Though he's been shot three times, though all these terrible things have happened to him, he's still alive. That, that I nailed to the cross, is still alive. And Satan wants to use it again. Because it worked. It worked. So, he's going to whisper it in the ear one more time. 
boy, this is kind of like that one situation. Remember when so-and-so did this to you? Ooh, yeah, I remember that. Now I'm going to share it again. No, I've given up that right. So, it will come back. That unforgiveness will come back. And you'll need to deal with it again. And you do the same thing. You put it back up there. Put it back on the cross. Um, resist the devil, and he will flee. That's what it says in James. That's him wanting to harm you more, and you need to resist him. And the Bible says that he will flee. Come nearer to God, and he'll come nearer to you. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's not a feeling. Um, you tell us the story of Corey. Oh, Corey came to him. She was in a uh, concentration camp for helping Jews. Um, her a lot of family members died in the concentration camp and died later as a result of the concentration camp. But she was afterwards. She went around speaking to to help restore it and and preach forgiveness. And was after that service, one of the services in Germany. One of the bars that she remembered his face because he was so mean and so mean to his sister, her sister, actually, Peter's sister, came up to him and said, Come up to her. Come up to her. And said, I don't know if you remember me or not, but I was at the same concentration camp you and your sister were. Well, of course you remembered him because he was one of the meanest ones there. And so he stuck out of hand and said, I've accepted Christ and I'm asking for your forgiveness. And in that moment, she didn't want to forgive him because. And this is where I'm going to take over. I want you to stand up. You're Corey. I'm the fat guard. Because as, as I looked at one today, it said that he was a fat man. And <laughs> so, what happened? I'm not going to make you do the rest of this. But what went through her head was a giant room with strong lights. And she was forced to stand in front of the man with the blue, the fat little man with the blue outfit on. And she was forced to walk naked in front of him. Because she was in prison. And she had to have, that memory is what popped into her head. And the memory of him hitting her sister. And so in that, that hurt and that feeling all popped back again. And he goes, I, I, I accepted Jesus. I've been forgiven. I know I've been forgiven. But I want to hear it from your lips. Can you forgive me? And she looked and said it was like, a warm, like a warm sensation because she, all this went through her head, how can I preach this but not live it? No. And she had to force her hand out and she said, once they shook hands, it was a warm sensation and she knew it was Christ had come to reside in that, in that person. So, it's that forcing, it's forcing yourself to forgive. And what I said about, um, in, in one of the cases where forgiveness was not coming, some of the forgiveness came when I saw that person again and talked to that person again. And uh, um, here's another part of it. Accept people who hurt you as they are. Did Jesus expect you to get all fixed up before you came to him? No, he took you as you were, as screwed up as we are. He accepted us. And that's the way we need to accept the people who have hurt us. And we talked about this last uh, on Thursday. That, does that mean that you hop into a relationship and be friends with him again? That No, that doesn't necessarily mean that. But... You do have to accept that person, how they are, and sometimes maybe have a conversation with them. And, I mean, this has happened with me. I've went and had the conversation with someone, and we get all, we're all all right again. And the next time they get the chance, they screw me over again. <laughs> and then I forgive them. And then they mess me up again. Then I forgive them. And go to them again, and they mess me over again. And then part of me goes, oh, maybe I should be as wise as a serpent. 
as if that snake was right next to me, pointing his ugly fangs at me, I would keep my distance. You can love someone, but know that they're dangerous to you, dangerous to other people, and you stay away from them. That doesn't mean that you don't care for them. It doesn't mean that you don't pray for them. It doesn't mean, but you're not going to be close buds. Because you know they're a snake, and they're, you know they're, the way they are is going to hurt you. It's the story of the scorpion. Um, and uh, scorpion and the frog. Does anybody know the scorpion and the frog? Okay. Uh, I got two frog stories. You'll love it. No, you don't. The one f- frog, here he is. Here's the river. The scorpion's over here. Can you be a scorpion? <clears throat> Hold on. The scorpion's over here, and he wants to get across the water. And uh, he says, can I have a ride? Can you say, can I have a ride? You're a scorpion, you got to say it. Can I have a ride? Sure. No, actually, he goes, you're a scorpion, and you're going to sting me. No, I won't. And then he asks again, can I have a ride? You're a scorpion. Why would I get halfway across? I'm going to drown if I do that. So then finally the frog says, sure, I'll take you. And he takes the scorpion, and he gets him halfway across. And the scorpion stings him, and they both die. Happy story, right? No, this is why we need to be wise as a serpent and know some people are scorpions. And some people are going to hurt us. And it's not being ungodly to go... I'm staying away from them. I'm staying away from them. So, that doesn't mean you haven't forgiven them. Okay. Here's the other frog story that you haven't heard, son. I was going to put this on Facebook, but I hadn't worked it up yet. Picture of three frogs. Three frogs. Here, you sit right here. Your frog? No, you sit right here, frog. Frog man. Who wants to be a frog? Somebody wants to be a frog. Sorry, Clayton, you didn't come. Help me. Right there. Here's the frog. There's three of us frogs here. And, uh, nope. Um, so we're thinking we have forgiveness issues and we're going to forgive. And I have decided I'm going to forgive. They're just thinking about it. I've decided in my heart I'm going to forgive. Okay. How many frogs are sitting here with unforgiveness? One, two. Nope. Do it. I've decided to do it, but I haven't done it yet. Three. Yeah, there's three of us. Because just because I made the decision, and that's what happens in church. You hear, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yep, I agree with that. Yep. I need to do that. I'm, I'm going to do that. When I get home... That's exactly what I'm going to do. But you know what? I never do it. I know it's right, and I know I should, but I never do. So, that's what we're doing now. I have a serious question. This involves raising hands. How many of you have somebody who God has put in your head that you have not forgiven? And if you haven't, I give you the time, this moment. God put it in their head. So, I have someone. Um, So, this is what we're going to do. Close your eyes. Lord, we're bringing this person to you. Lord, we want to forgive. And we don't know how to forgive. And we know that you said... Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they're doing. We're asking you to show us how to forgive. And Lord, that we hand that person over to you right now. And in this, we, we, we give up the right to, uh, to talk about what they did to us. We give up the right to dwell on it, to share it with others. We give up the right to hear I'm sorry.
and we accept them as they are. Now, if you have more names, you just do the same thing again and again and again. And the next time, the person that you just forgave, when that pops into your head again about what they did to you, you go, it's on the cross. They're forgiven. I'm not, what did it say? Resist the devil and he will flee. You tell him, no, I'm not going to listen to that. And, and change your mind Think about something else. That's what the word repent means. It means a change of mind. So if you're dwelling on that thing, um, thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it, now you've forgiven. Okay, I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm going to repent. I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to think about something else. One way to think about something else is to pray for them. Or just get them completely out of your head. I've forgiven them. Go on and watch, watch Duck Dynasty. I don't know. <laughs> Something to take your mind off of that thing. It's what happened a few minutes ago. Each one of us are like Quentin. Quentin? Come here. Hello, Quentin. Come here. Come here. A few minutes ago, I don't know if everybody was here yet, but Quentin, come here. Quentin wanted to go outside. What did you want to go outside for? He doesn't even remember. He wanted his car. And I instructed Jonathan to go over there and do something. And what I've learned as a parent, children are the way, and so are we. If we have our minds set on something, all we can do is what you were doing with your mom a few minutes ago. I want the car. I want the car. I want the car. I want the car. I'm going to go after the car. Come on, Mom. Let me go to the, Let me have the car. But, if we change that mind, and we focus it on, ooh, one, two, three, jump up and down. He's forgotten all about the car. And now all I can think about is one, two, three. So, our mind is the same way. It gets set in a certain rut. That mean person, they did this, they did this, they did this. We get our mind out of that rut, and drive somewhere else away from that rut. It may come back to that rut, but let's repent. We change our mind and think about something else. Forgive them again. Lord, I know you've forgiven them. I'm having problems with it. Forgive them. Pray for them. Lord, bless them. Help them. And then change your mind. Go on a different track. So, do that. When you have more people in your head, do that. Sorry, my favorite. So, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord, we just thank you for this day and thank you for loving us and thank you for giving it for forgiving us. And Lord, we don't have to come to you again and again and again. You've already forgiven us for those sins and you put them at the bottom of the deepest ocean, put the sign that says no fishing, don't go in, don't remember these sins, don't look at them anymore. We're forgiven. So Lord, help us to do the same thing with those who have hurt us. And Lord, you love us even though we fall short and we make mistakes. So help us to love them even though they fall short and they make mistakes. So Lord, uh, teach us to be.